Hey, check out Ben and Rachel from Apartment 3 Pizza. Not only are they making incredible pizza, but all the proceeds goes to a local charitable organization in their neighborhood. Hey, my name's Ben. I'm Rachel. Thank you. And we're Apartment 3 Pizza. Awesome. So our, before Apartment 3 Pizza, before we got on Instagram and everything, we really dug in the last year and a half making pizza. It was right before the pandemic. Rachel's always been a really good chef. Me, I don't really cook that much. Uh, and, and I really wanted to get into to cooking, but my relationship always with food before it was just pizza. Locally, um, as you know, like Miriam, really inspired us initially and after we swapped pizzas with her one night that was kind of the like moment that we were like we, we should be doing something we can be doing something mm -hmm. we have the resources and the time and there's clearly a want and need in the neighborhood to a try pizza and b i think people are really motivated to give back right now so that felt like a really yeah. inspiring moment to get things uh, kick-started. And then I think besides that, Ben has like a bunch of yeah. culinary muses as well, as uh, like also people that are doing really good. Yeah, that is, that is a really good point though. I mean, you know, 10 months ago, this whole making pizza out of our apartment, like that just wasn't a thing across the board. So like Miriam kind of championed that uh, in Brooklyn and we live so close to her and got to meet her. Um, we're doing a pop-up with her soon and it's just, she really kind of set the bar of her. We're very embedded in our Cobble Hill roots right now. Uh, the Franks at F&F mm -hmm. are just pushing the boundaries of what uh, a pizza slice can be in Brooklyn. They do naturally fermented. They use all the, you know, you know organic ingredients that make pizza. Mark Iacono of the Cali uh, is a pretty big influence. And he's kind of the blend. Our pizza, we think, is like a hybrid at F&F and F and uh, Lucali where it's uh, a little more rooted in like a slice nature because we cook our pizza a little longer than a wood fire but it still has that you know really puffy crust that Mark's making. Uh, Chris Bianco himself is as good as it gets and we got really into you know go figure if, you know bread making as well as pizza and so what he was doing uh, uh, at Tartine with Chad Robertson when they kind of fused up and, and started working together in LA we kind of have like a bread-like approach to the dough we make, so it's those guys together pretty influential to us. I think the G train for me, mm -hmm. which takes a little bit longer, the process is a little bit more rigorous, there's more ingredients involved, but it's delicious. It's like a pesto-based pizza with zucchini on top. Um, and we don't see it very often, so it's a little bit special, I think. Yeah, it's a Detroit style Sicilian, and that's definitely one of my favorite too. Mm -hmm. One that we've been just, we can't eat enough of these days is we call it the Two Times. It's named after the Franks at F and F. It's uh, Calabrian chili, red onion, uh, and then we have uh, a friend who lives in Ithaca. His neighbor makes delicious honey, and so every time we go up to Ithaca, we get a jar, and so we kind of top. Uh, that pizza with some, some, you know, local honey, and, and it's like my favorite. It's the perfect balance of like sweet and, and spicy, and it's, it's, I can eat it. Some of our favorite spots, like where I work in Park Slope, is this slice place called Luigi's, which is like very classic New York style slice. Uh, F and F is delicious. Yeah. Yeah, the like industry and best pizza. You know, they kind of set the bar in that neighborhood as, as far as slice goes. We, that's a good question. It's I'm not sure how this is all going to shake out. You know, one of the things that we weren't anticipating going into this was the interest. I mean, we were making it for our friends and like they were gassing us up saying it was good pizza. So like we'd make it and be like, oh, like, you know, maybe we should do some pop-ups. And then our first pop-up, we were hoping to raise $100. Uh, but then we sold out in, in a couple hours and ended up raising $500 that first time. And that was great, but then also we were like, oh no, I don't know how sustainable this is because we didn't want to just donate the proceeds of these pop-ups, like all the ingredients and everything we buy, any Venmo that comes in will still donate it. So it's not like we're taking, you know, awesome. we're taking the cost out. So it's like, it became a little more expensive when we started making more and more pizzas. But then uh, like a month ago, all the companies that we started, you know, buying and, and supporting like Bianca Di Napoli, Mike's Hot Honey, Ezzo, uh, yeah, Partana, 
they all heard what we were doing and got involved and, and started uh, you know partnering with us to supply us ingredients for these uh, pop-ups. And that's just, you know, mind-blowing, you know. Mike's Hot Honey, which is like local to us in Brooklyn, not only do they send us enough honey for, you know, the rest of our lives, <laughs> but they also chipped in and donated a thousand dollars to Brooklyn Relief Kitchen on our behalf. So it's it's really rewarding because we spent all these months really seeking out the our favorite ingredients and, and it's just incredibly overwhelming to see that it's not only are these companies who are kind of like mom pop shops, you know, making the best ingredients because they're on a slightly smaller scale, but they're also committed to you know, the pizza community and, and what we're doing. So it's, it's been awesome. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks.